What? This was my reaction to seeing the new coronal mass ejection events in Star Citizen for the first time. I think it's pretty obvious from the clip that I think it's a pretty cool implementation. However, from a physics point of view, it's not correct. And I actually think that if CIG implemented a physically correct implementation of coronal mass ejections, it would make the game even better. Before we get ahead of ourselves, we should probably talk about what is a coronal mass ejection. And there's a bit of confusion here because CIG has previously called the star in Pyro for a flaring star, but now it's sending out coronal mass ejections and flares and mass ejections are not the same thing. They are similar, but not the same thing. You'll probably have seen pictures or videos of the sun where you will see these arches standing over. These are the magnetic fields that are emerging from the surface and created these arches. And due to an effect called flux freezing, where the plasma that the sun is made out of will basically stick to the magnetic field because a plasma is essentially just a gas where it's been so hot that all the electrons has been knocked free from the um, atomic nuclei making it essentially a magnetic gas. So you have a gas that can be affected by magnetic fields. This is why we can see the arches and we can see the magnetic field on the sun visually. Now, before I started all this YouTube stuff, I was actually studying astrophysics and I wrote my master thesis on magnetic field structures on the sun leading up to solar flare events. So I am uniquely qualified to talk about these things. You see, if you have two of these arches that emerges from the sun in a very specific way, you can get up getting these like spine dome kind of structures where you will have a long spine from the larger arc and the smaller emergent arc will cause a like a dome kind of structure. Um, and where these two meet, you will have this X shape. In this X shape, you get an event called um, magnetic reconnection where the magnetic flux from one arc will begin to flip through this X region and reconnect with magnetic flux from the other arc. Else that reconnection happened, because we talked about the plasma being magnetic, that is pulled with it through that X region and accelerated to really, really high speeds. That's a solar flare. A coronal mass ejection, on the other hand, is a much less violent effect. It is a basically one of these arches that interact with itself. The bottom of it kind of meets, and you once again get this X structure, and you get the same like flux freezing and, and magnetic reconnection effect, but instead of, of having that accelerated gas that goes, or plasma that's been shut out, that entire bubble that's now been created on top is ejected. Much lower speed, but a lot more material, a lot more mass is being ejected through coronal mass ejections. Now, I could talk for days about this, but the important takeaway is that regardless of whether we talk about flares and whether we talk about coronal mass ejections, these are highly directional events. However, the implementation in Star Citizen seemed to be that these are omnidirectional events where it just happens, the sun just decides to send out coronal mass ejections in all directions at the same time. That's not physically correct. So here's my suggestion, how I think CIG could make a physically more correct implementation that would also lead to better gameplay. Divide the system into quadrants or however many like slices or sections that you want pizza slices in the system basically. Then you also divide the system into an inner and a outer solar system. And then whenever a coronal mass ejection event happens, it will happen in just one of these quadrants. And if you were to travel into such a region, you would have a chance to either you would be lucky and you just go straight through, nothing would happen. You could be unlucky that your ship might take a bit of damage, maybe your modules take some damage. Uh, maybe your quantum drive temporarily shuts down and you're stuck and maybe you're lucky you can reboot it or if you're really unlucky maybe it shuts down and won't restart it until the flare event is over or maybe not at all. There could be many degrees of severity and depending on how much time you spend in there and whether you go into the inner part of the solar system where you're close to the star or if you go out to the outer part of the solar system where, the, where you're further from the star then the chances of these like bad events happening to you would be more or less. So if you're close, higher chance of bad things happening if you're further out, um, less chance. Or of course, if you go the other way around to star, well, you would be safe. Doing it like this will add player agency. That means that you as a player, you can make a choice. Do you want to make a risk and fly through a, fly through a flaring section of the system, hoping you make it? 
But again, shorter travel times. Maybe you uh, want to take the medium approach and go out to the outer system and take a small detour out there to get around it to reduce your risk. Or maybe you want to play it ultra safe and go all the way around the other side of the star to avoid that region. This could be further added upon by adding basically like an EM resistance to quantum drives. So maybe you could have the, the fastest quantum drives like the XL1s or something would have terrible EM protection. So if you just fly into one of these regions, it will just shut down almost immediately, almost every time. But if you pick a slower drive, then maybe you would have more protection from against EM, making it better for flying in systems with these flaring stars, as they call them. I think that not only does this make it more fun for us, the players, but it's also a physically more correct implementation of how coronal mass ejections should work. I have two more things I want to say. First of all, I would really like to know what you think. Post that in the comment section. And secondly, if you like these more scientific type of videos, you should check out my science channel called Cosmic Curiosity. It's currently in hibernation, but it's starting up again in full force next year. So if you're interested in following me over on the, on the science channel, Check out Cosmic Curiosity. I'll be linking it in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys in space.